So it finally happened. We got Harry and Meghan at a royal engagement two years after Mexit and one year after that infamous Oprah interview. And there were many signals that confirmed they were not welcome, as you're about to find out. Welcome back, my body language buddies. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the body language guy. And it would be great if you join us by just liking this video, subscribing and hitting that bell. Let's get down to it. It so happens that today was the Thanksgiving service for Her Majesty's reign at St. Paul's Cathedral and the Harkos were expected to show up. And I'm sure they would not miss this opportunity for anything in the world, especially because they still need all the clout they can muster to remain relevant and current. Now I want to talk about that walk of shame. Harry, I want to understand how do you completely undermine your relationship with your own family, supporting the lies of your wife, making sure people around the world has the idea that the royal family members are somehow racist, and then expect to come here, claiming that this is your home, and attending this Thanksgiving service just like that. Because let's be honest, Meghan was acting like the last two years never happened. And it would have been nice if Harry remained respectful, but no, he had to play the buffoon. Now, to be fair, most of the time Harry's face was just plain miserable. He was looking down, defeated, lack of energy, and that's why there were so many jokes about nothing changing from the last time we saw him and Meghan at that royal engagement at Westminster Abbey in 2020. You would expect that after two glorious years of free life, of not being trapped in boring royal duties, of living the American dream with his lovely wife in their 16 bathroom house, would have infused him with a joyful attitude, especially if he was coming back to his home as a free man with his whole family. But no. We were all disappointed. We all just got regular Harry. And don't be fooled by Meghan's smile. She was also uncomfortable at times, such as here, where her neck muscles are really tense. Not to mention that fleeting display of what we already know as the Markle Claw. But there was a good reason for that tension. There is no way people can deny this. Harry and Meghan were booed twice, both upon arrival at the cathedral and on the way out. It was something almost expected and no amount of bells, and I mean a lot of bells, could hide the fact that they are not that welcome anymore in the UK. And that could be one of the reasons why both of them were tense upon the reaction of the public when they entered the cathedral. I cannot show or highlight the faces of the attendants, but I can tell you that they were not amused with the presence of the infamous duo. But at the same time, one has to acknowledge the fact that there were people cheering for the Harkles. I have no use denying that, and I'm sure that cheering was especially for Meghan. She must have rabbit fans everywhere, there's no doubt about it. I mean, if even Amber Heard has fans, then anything is possible. Now, I want to talk about Meghan's dress. I will put it simply, I like what she wore this time. I think it was appropriate for the occasion, and the color chosen was in very good taste. My only recommendation is to be careful with dresses that have horizontal elements that divide or cut your figure, such as the belt. Those elements just emphasize the width of your torso and break the continuity of your body. Exactly the same happens with the horizontal flaps at the back, a horizontal element that makes your back look wider. On the other hand, the oversized collar is good to make your neck look slimmer, as well as the vertical divide of that French coat designed. Now, what was that thing in the middle of her chest? Well, maybe it's just a button under the upper layer of fabric. It's that, or a Netflix microphone. In that case, I'm sure it recorded the booing loud and clear. Many have pointed out that both William and Catherine were not behaving as usual when they entered the cathedral. Just for a quick reminder, they arrived some five minutes after the Harkles, so there was no contact between them. I noticed that William was really concerned and was pressing his jaw more than normal. We already know that he's a tense man and that jaw clenching is part of his baseline. But for example, on the lighting of the beacons yesterday, he felt much more at ease and confident, with virtually no jaw clenching whatsoever. One of the possible reasons he had that attitude today could have been that the Queen could not attend this Thanksgiving service since she was exhausted from yesterday's engagements. Catherine, on the other hand, she had her usual genuine smiles, which are also part of her body language baseline, but at the same time there was just a bit of awkwardness to her demeanor. 
I'm sure she can't be that comfortable with Megan hanging around. But, as I mentioned, the order in which they entered and left the cathedral made sure that the Cambridges would never meet the Sussexes face to face, or even have to deal with them in any way. I suppose that this was part of royal protocol, that there was some kind of disposition of working and non-working royals, but at the same time, Zara and Mike Tyndall were sitting on William and Catherine's side, so that complicates things a bit. And I'm about to talk about something very relevant that Zara did with the Harkles. At least Harry and Meghan were in good company since they were sitting next to a genie, who's part of their team. But what they could not escape is the label that the media has already put on them, such as the Telegraph that calls them second row royals. And I'm here to correct that. They are not second row royals. They are not royals, period. Stop calling them like that. And I mention Sarah not only because she had the most spectacular dress with that pink hue that was impossible to miss, but was the only one that reached out to the Harkles when they were about to exit the cathedral. Well, that's always been part of her cheerful attitude. Even if these people basically tried to burn the royal family's reputation, well, at least she's reaching out to them and having a 10 second chat while they wait for their car. It was that or the royal family held a meeting last night to draw straws and she got the shortest one. You go girl, just 10 seconds, that's all that you need to do. But Mike, no, he wasn't buying any of it. And he acted exactly like any of us when we are actively ignoring someone with tactics like looking into the distance or the human shield. In other words, anything to not have to deal with the Harkles in any way. There is no doubt that Megan is doing all this for attention, from those pictures that troop in the color when she was playing in the role of the cool funny aunt, telling the children at the window to keep her presence a secret. And not including Harry, who looked like the creepiest version of this gesture ever. Don't tell me that they didn't stand in those places expecting the shot. I'm surprised that this did not include a picture of Megan looking straight into the camera, which would have been iconic in every possible way. Or the attention they wanted to attract by lowering the car window when they were going down the road. Where are the security concerns you had? Are you not aware of how many tomatoes can fit through that window? I still find it hard to understand how this couple, after all that they have done to undermine the public's perception of the monarchy and especially the royal family, have the right to just show their faces like nothing had happened. I'm sure that part of William's attitude was rejecting this idea, no matter how many olive branches Prince Charles or even Her Majesty the Queen would like to extend, so the Montecito grifters can have a seat at the table again. In all cases, William's reaction is the appropriate one. It's called self-respect, because when someone steps on you and the ones you love, you don't dare give them the opportunity to do it a second time. And that's something we all should reflect upon. You can always help me spot topics to analyze following and tagging me on my Instagram account. And if you want to refine your observation skills, all you have to do is download my 100 body language tips right in the description of this video. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas and it will always be a pleasure, my body language buddies. Much love and bliss.